Hey folks, this is George at the Office of Image Archaeology, and um, we're going to do a short tour tour uh, tutorial here uh, about shaky film. And we're not talking about um, we're not talking about shaky film uh, from um, the standpoint of the cameraman. We're talking about shaky film from the standpoint of somebody that is repairing or digitizing analog film. Uh, there are those folks out there dealing with a digital video that have got a lot of these tutorials about uh, shaky footage, but they're talking about footage that has been, um, uh, it's shaky because of the camera, because of the cameraman or whatever. It's a completely different thing than what we're dealing with here. Uh, this, this shaky footage is strictly from the transfer process. Um, old film, shrunk, expanded, warped, whatever, um, uh, pocket holes uh, um, uh, uh, that have been uh, abused causes this. Um, you can see here that I have um, digitized this in such a way where it includes two things that uh, you normally, a lot of folks don't uh, capture, and that is my sprocket holes and my soundtrack. My soundtrack I will extract later on and create a sound film for, for this. In fact, I already have um, if here. So um, I've already done that part of it, um, but um, what I want to show you is how to get rid of this this shaky uh, footage that makes it look like there's a jackhammer under your monitor. So with that said, I'm going down here to Adobe Premiere 2020. Now I balked for many years about paying Adobe their fee, their monthly fee uh, for this because I always, I came from the old school and you buy some software, it belongs to you. Well, I got to tell you, um, my old Adobe products that I purchased years ago cost me a lot of money, but this thing has been improved by leaps and bounds. And uh, if you get it on sale, I think it's worth it. It's $30 a month to me right now. For, it's released that, that way for a year. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, so right now we have, uh, I've imported the, uh, um, the footage into my Adobe Premiere. We want to get that to, to After Effects. There are multiple ways to get this to After Effects. And um, uh, the, two ways, uh, the, the two ways that I use are either to drag and drop it in there straight from, from Windows Explorer. Um, or I right click on the file, or I'm, I'm sorry, on the, uh, on the clip, on the, on the timeline, and you go to replace with After Effects Composition. After Effects will come up. <clears throat> I've, re I've digitized this using um, the 2K Universal version of the RetroScan Universal Machine um, from um, uh, movie stuff. Great machines, like a things built like a tank. Um, they do some pretty crazy stuff with it. Uh, you need to uh, save this. And we're going to call it Test Seven. For it doesn't matter. And then we have our clip in After Effects. Now, like I told you before, you could just drag it over here, and you'd have this same thing. You would not have this comp uh, composition uh, file. But you would have the uh, the MPEG, the original MPEG file, if you draw if you drug it off of the um, out of Adobe. Um, I'm sorry, Windows Explorer. And then all you do is you, you grab that and you'll pull it on down on top of where it says create a new composition, and then you'll wind up with that uh, file and or, or I guess it's a file. And down here you wind up with uh, this on the timeline. I am not an expert at this whatsoever. I just I know something that works, and so I'm just sharing it with you guys. Um, once you've done that, then you're going to come on over here to where it says Stabilize Motion. If you don't have your tracker window up, come on down and you would just get Tracker. Click that and uh, it'll, you know, either the tracker window will disappear or in this case I want it back and so the tracker window's, uh, did I do that right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, okay we got our tracker back. Um, and then you'll go ahead and you'll come over here. I, I do not use, I haven't used, I haven't found a purpose for it, Tracker Motion, Tracker Camel, or Warp Stabilizer, because I can get Warp Stabilizer out of Adobe Premiere. Stabilize Motion is, however, is what I use. Um, and so I'll click on that. That gives me my tracker point in the center of the screen. 
I'll enlarge that slightly. I'll enlarge that slightly. Now I have a bullseye. You drag that, and it, and, and uh, while you're dragging it, it gives you um, a magnifying view. Look at all the graininess in that thing. Um, magnify view, and I come up here where the high contrast area is um, at the uh, point of uh, the merger point between my sprocket hole, the uh, clear film, and the uh, exposed film. And um, you can use either one of these sprocket holes. If you have a silent film, uh, capture all sprocket holes. You have four of them to use from because you use because see if you're in this case if I didn't have a sprocket hole and I was over here I'd have issues. I would still have a high contrast area, but if this goes dark, I lose it completely. So you're better off uh, you know doing what you can to, you know, with uh, with the sprocket holes. At least that's been my experience. Once you're done with that, you're gonna come on over here to uh, where uh, the uh, your tracker controls are. Don't use the preview uh, panel, but down here at the bottom, use the analyze panel, and you'll say analyze forward. Right now, um, it is analyzing every frame of uh, this fantastic post World War II film uh, produced by Harry. Lehman, I think his name was, from, um, uh, he's from Bakersfield, I believe. Uh, but uh, this is a film for the uh, California Air National Guard. That's some great footage. Every time I see stuff like this, I'm going, why can't this be mine? <laughs> And that's where we have it. Once it stops, come on over here where it says apply, click apply, and then say motion tracker apply options. And we have rock steady film. You see a jump here in a moment. Yeah, there you go, a little jump. That's because I did not edit this, pre edit this prior to doing this. Typically what I will do is I will go through an entire film like this and I will edit out every um, every jump and every splice because that, that has uh, an effect on, on what you see over here. Let me go back to that. Let's go back to that jump. See that jump? See what that did right there? You see this? When you have that jump, it's going to go ahead and it's going to cause a problem. So if I edit it, if I cut that jump out, it just goes straight across. It doesn't happen, so it doesn't affect your tracking. So now, if I I could I could actually get rid of that. If I if uh, there's another way to do it by tracking something within the film. But as I said before, we're not tracking film mistakes. We're tracking digitizing of, uh, mistakes or uh, the effect from adverse effect of digitizing. That's all we're correcting here. Now, Movie Stuff makes a um, sprocket hole tracker adapter I can get for this machine. Unfortunately, my budget won't stand that. Um, but uh, aside from that, this is the only other way that I know of doing it. Once you got this all done and you want to get this back to Adobe Premiere, simply go over here to File and then Save and then go back to Adobe Premiere. And we have, in fact, here, let me fix something here. It's easier to see it when you do it this way. It's pretty good compared to what it was. Still got that little thing there, but you can take that out, no problem. Anyway, folks, that's um, that's that. Oh, the uh, the other thing I was going to show you is that if you by chance had uh, imported this film or you know, did a drag and drop into um, into uh, um, Adobe After Effects. After, into, into Adobe After Effects, you're going to want to, um, because you're not going to be back into Premiere, you took it, it won't be in Premiere, it came from your uh, 
Windows Explorer into After Effects, you've got to put it back into Windows Explorer. There's no way to put it back, as far as I know, back into Premiere because it didn't come from there. So in order to do that, uh, you'll come up to uh, Composition and you'll say Add, uh, uh, Add Adobe Media Encoder Queue. And mine was already up because I've already done this already one time because I screwed up. Somebody, it was a phone call right in the middle of it. <laughs> so I'm re redoing it. Um, you can see that's my evidence up there. So what we do is we come down here and uh, we're going to say, uh, just uh, say save. And then um, you'll go to there. And right now it's digitizing it, saving it back to... Um, your Windows Explorer. So that takes care of that. It shows you how to get rid of the, uh, the jackhammer under your monitor and um, how to save it. Anyway, you folks have a really good day and uh, thank you for watching.